Hi everyone, I'm Dimitri Toshkov and I collect words of art and popular culture on the themes of bureaucracy and bureaucrats. There are not so many such works and I suggest some possible reasons why in another video. But today I want to present to you five of my favorite movies about bureaucracy and civil servants. These are all beautiful movies directed by some of the greatest film directors of the 20th century. Akira Kurosawa, Terry Gilliam, Ken Loach and others. And while they're all great, they're very different and present five unique perspectives on bureaucracy. Let's start with perhaps the most obscure movie from the five, the 1966 Cuban comedy Death of a Bureaucrat, directed by Tomasz Gutierrez Alea. In this movie, a model socialist worker, a proletarian hero, dies and is buried with his union card. But the wife and nephew of the worker need his union card to get his pension. And in the quest to get the card, they have to navigate the unreal but all too recognizable absurdities of bureaucracy. At the end, it proves easier for the nephew to lose his mind, kill the cemetery director and eventually exhume the body of his uncle himself, which only starts a new round in the bureaucratic labyrinth. Let's see a short clip from the movie. La muerte de un burócrata. Tráigame una orden judicial o de la dirección de sanidad o venga dentro de dos años. Ah, oh, chico, para esto tiene que volver mañana. Ma Acaban de marcharse ahora mismo. Pero... Ciclo 2014 de nuestro cine. A great and very brave black comedy about the absurdities of empty formalities satirizing life in communist Cuba. The second movie in the list takes up the absurdities to a whole new level. In the dystopian epic Brazil, directed by Terry Gilliam, a low-level bureaucrat escapes the monotony of his day-to-day -day life through a recurring daydream of himself as the virtuous hero. Investigating a case that led to the wrongful arrest and eventual death of an innocent man instead of a wanted terrorist, he meets the woman from his daydream. And in trying to help her, gets caught in a web of mistaken identities, mindless bureaucracy and lies. Let's see the cult scene from the work routine at the Ministry of Information from the movie. Ah, the bureaucrat and his paperwork, a theme that inevitably comes back in most works of art on bureaucracy. So far, we had on the list a satirical black comedy and an extravagant dystopia. Time for a contemporary realist social drama, delivered by Ken Loach, the 2016 movie I, Daniel Blake. The plot revolves around a 59-year-old widowed carpenter who must rely on welfare after a recent heart attack. But despite his doctor diagnosis, British authorities deny Blake benefit and tell him to return to his job. As, Na as Daniel navigates his way through an agonizing appeal process, we witness a heartless, infuriating bureaucracy that seems designed to strip all dignity from its unfortunate clients, against which at the end Daniel Blake revolts. Personally, I find this portrayal of British Social Welfare Administration in this movie very one-sided. 
but it is certainly one that provoked strong emotional reactions. Let's see a minute from the trailer. Good morning, Mr. Blake. I'm appointed to carry out assessments for employment and support allowance. Can you walk more than 50 metres? Yes. Can you raise either arm as if to put something in your top pocket? Yes. Can I ask you a question? Are you medically qualified? I've had a major heart attack. I've been told by my doctor that I'm not supposed to go back to work yet. I'm afraid you must continue to look for work or your benefit payments will be frozen. There must be some mistake. If you've been deemed fit for work, your only option is job seekers allowance. Well, I want to appeal. You have to apply online, sir. I was a carpenter. I've never been anywhere near a computer. So you need to run the mouse up the screen. No. Not now. No, not like that. I'm just going round in circles. I'm going to have to I'm ask you to explain leave. to you a situation and you don't care. I've got right. about 12 quid in my purse. Do you know what? You've created a scene. All right. So Jesus what am I Christ. To do? Who's first in this queue? I am. Do you mind if this young lass signs on first? No, no, you carry on. This isn't your concern. I want you to get out as well. Yes, bureaucracy is often tragedy, and when it's not, it's usually farce. And the fourth movie in the list is my favourite farce of bureaucratic life ever made, In the Loop, a 2009 British comedy directed by Armando Iannucci. The plot turns around the attempt of the US President and UK Prime Minister to prepare the ground for a war, and the efforts of bureaucrats and political operatives on both sides to prevent it. But the plot hardly matters, as the real story is about the mishaps of everyone involved in their actions to outmaneuver their opponents by organizing fake committee meetings, forging documents, giving TV interviews that go horribly wrong, and so on. The main character, Malcolm Tucker, a foul-mouthed spin doctor played by Peter Capaldi, has already acquired a cult anti-hero status in popular culture due to his short temper, brash manners and colourful language, delivered with a strong Scottish accent. Here is a part of the trailer, which amazingly manages not to include any of the strong language in the movie. Is war unforeseeable, Minister? Look, for the plane in the fog, um, the mountain is un unforeseeable, but then it is suddenly very real and unforeseeable. Thank you so much. He did not say unforeseeable. You may have heard him say that, but he did not say that. I don't think war is unforeseeable. What is it then? I don't know. Foreseeable? No. No! Wars do sometimes work. <laughs> You know I'm against the war. Where is the intelligence? There is an informant. Ice man. Ice man. It's not, I don't name them. That is your career. We request carbonated and non-carbonated waters. You know they're all kids in Washington. It's like Bugsy Malone, but with real guns. You are my Kunta Kenti. Go and get your laptop. You're going to use them as a meat puppet. A meat. A prime cut. Whip hip. Whip hip? Whip what? what does that mean? Well, I think it, I think it just means, actually, I don't, know, I don't know what it means. You're an idiot. Absolutely hilarious. But the final movie in the list brings back darkness, death, and the tragic emptiness of a life spent in the bureaucratic office. The masterpiece from 1952, Ikiru or To Live, directed by Akira Kurosawa. The movie follows the last days of a petty bureaucrat working in the same dusty office for the past 30 years, who is suddenly diagnosed with terminal stomach cancer. Facing death, he attempts to truly live for the first time after all these years of monotonous and meaningless existence. And he decides to fight the bureaucratic system that has provided him with numbing comfort over the decades, in order to finally get something done, a small public children's park that would become his legacy to the world. In Ikiru, bureaucracy is portrayed as the epitome of meaningless work and the antithesis of life itself. The piles of papers in the protagonist's office have crowded out all joy and purpose. They threaten to fall any moment and crush him and having consumed his soul already. Thank you.
This completes my list of five movies about bureaucracy. Despite the five very different styles, all five of these films tend to converge either on the tragic or the farcical, which is actually really interesting. It seems impossible to portray bureaucracy in any other emotional key. If you want to see more works of art and popular culture related to bureaucracy, check out my collection on the web, Facebook or Twitter at these links. And if you know of any works that should be added to the collection, drop me a line and I'll be happy to include them. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and good luck.